Today on CJ Off-Road, we're putting a hitch on our Gladiator. If you've got a brand new Gladiator and are looking to install the Mopar hitch, today we're going to show you just how to do that. Now we've got our 2020 Gladiator Overland and ours didn't come equipped with a hitch. However, it did come with that bumper mount it just played underneath that you can mount a ball to. Now this hitch is rated up to 7,650 pounds, but you have to make sure that your Jeep's equipped to handle that and you read your service guide to figure that out. Now we're gonna show you all the step-by-step -step process. This is a Mopar part, so it includes everything that you need. We're gonna show you how to do it onto your Overland. It's gonna be the exact same process. A little bit different if you have a Rubicon, but we'll talk about that shortly. Let's get it installed. So we've got a Jeep up on lift, and the first thing that we need to do is remove the factory bumper. Now since ours is plastic, it's only gonna take a couple bolts, but if you do have the Rubicon, there's gonna be three bolts on either side with those smaller skid plates that you have to pull off first. First thing you're gonna do is grab a 16 millimeter socket and ditch four of the bolts back here, and then we'll kind of work around and get all of them pulled out. So we're gonna use a 16 millimeter socket to pull both of these nuts off of the stud that is on this plate here. Now this is the factory hitch bumper that allows you to mount it onto the tongue of your rear bumper, but we're not gonna use that because it's not rated that high. So go ahead and grab a 16 mil deep socket. And I'll be honest with you guys, these are not that tight from factory. So we're gonna fix that when we pull them off and then reinstall the new bumper. But it took like two or three kind of turns of the ratchet there and they're pretty much loose. Make sure you save these and then we're gonna repeat the same process on the other side. So there's a harness that runs behind here that's going to power both your license plate lights and your wiring harness for the trailer hitch. What you need to do is grab a trim removal tool and pull these push pins out on here as well as all along the back. And then we'll disconnect the harness from here and also disconnect it at our trailer wiring harness portion. And then we should be able to move on to some new bolts. So after you've got a few of those push pins removed, you'll realize that there are two harnesses in the back. This is gonna be the license plate harness and to remove that, you pull up on the red tab and push in. And then this is going to be your trailer wiring harness. This is gonna go in from the back of the vehicle. And all you need to do is depress on this top side. It'll be sitting in like this in the back of the bumper. So push this in and pull it out towards you and that'll come off as well. Now what we're gonna do now is move to the outside of the vehicle and there are two bolts behind your license plate. So we'll get those pulled off now. In order to remove your license plate, there are gonna be two 10 millimeter screws. You can either use a flathead or a 10 to get those off. And then behind them are two 16 millimeter bolts. What we're gonna do is grab our power ratchet and just zip these off quick. With all that hardware removed and your wiring harnesses properly removed off of there, we can grab our plastic or steel bumper cover and simply pull it off, revealing our factory tow hitch. So you can see now that we've got this factory bracket all pulled apart and you need to remove four bolts on each side to get this removed from the vehicle. There's gonna be two 21 millimeter bolts up top and then two right down here below. I'm gonna go ahead and use a deep socket. We do have a dual tip exhaust, so it makes it a little bit tricky. If you don't have this, it'll be much easier to get up in here, but remove those two and remove the bottom two. And then once we pull this off, we'll show you how to pull the tow hooks off as well and get those to transfer over to your new hitch. couple turns and they will remove quite easily. It's nice working on a brand new vehicle because nothing's really rusted. So if you are watching this video down the road, you know, a couple years from now, and your Gladiator's got some rust, definitely hit it with some PB Blaster or penetrating oil before you do this because it's probably gonna seize up down the road. Down below, the two screws are gonna be right behind where I kind of smudged some of our road salt there. So just right down below there, two 21 millimeters. I'm gonna only pull off one of them and then I'll go over to the other side and pull off three the exact same way. That way the thing doesn't fall on me when I pull them all off. Might be a helpful tip for you if you're sitting in the driveway alone or grab a buddy, a jack stand, something just to hold up this other side. That way it doesn't come tumbling down when you pull them all off. So this is what the smaller bolts look like. They'll just go right down below. But I'm gonna go over and repeat the exact same process on the other side to remove three of them grab a friend so we can lower this down, pull these hooks off and start installing our hitch. So I'm gonna utilize uh, Ryan's assistant. He's gonna hold the other side of the bumper while I loosen up this side. This is where it helps to have either a buddy, a jack, something like that to hold it up. 
But as soon as I get this bolt out, I'm gonna have Ryan just walk it away. Then we'll grab the tow hooks off of it and then two other pieces we need. Pick up on a little bit over here. All right, you're about to have it. Okay, you got it. Just let it, like, lower it. There you go, perfect. With this off, we need to pull our tow hook off of the driver's side, as well as these two little clips, which I think will pull off of the flathead screwdriver as these will go over onto the hitch. First, we'll grab a 21. Make sure we save these because we will be reinstalling them. the hook out. I like to just thread them back into place so that way we don't lose them. Now to get these off I'm just going to simply use a flathead and try and just pop it out and one clip like that. Same on the other side. And that's it, this is all completely finished. We don't need to use any other parts off the factory hitch. So after you've got all the parts transferred off of your factory hitch receiver, we're gonna go ahead and grab our new one and this is where we're gonna start to install the tow hook as well as two of those clips to attach two of the bolts. First thing that we're gonna do is grab our driver side tow hook. If you have a Rubicon, you have two of these and they are slotted to go on each side. So basically we're just gonna take this, slide it through there. There's actually a little slot as well as a extrusion on the tow hook. I'll get both of these started. I'm gonna tighten them up mostly by hand here just to make sure it stays in the right spot. And these will get torqued down to 165 Newton meters. Then the next thing you want to do is transfer over both of these nut tabs. You want to make sure that this extruded end is facing towards the front of the vehicle and that you can put the bolt in on the same side as where you put your hitch receiver in. These will just slide right on and lock in. Just like that. So Mopar does include brand new hardware, just in case yours was rusted, old, or worn out. This is gonna be rated up to the 7,650 pound capacity that this hitch can hold. These are gonna be the four long bolts as well as the four short bolts that hold the hitch up to the frame of the vehicle. So let's go ahead and throw that on now. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna use Ryan's help to hold this up into place and get some of the bolts started. And I'm just gonna get one of these started. Hold it, you got it? Yep. All right, you're good. So with those lower two bolts just holding this up, what we're gonna do now is grab the brand new included hardware. Push up on the hitch so we can get both the side bolts started. And then once all these side bolts are in, I'm gonna throw in the two lower ones. And we are making sure this entire time to use the brand new hardware that Mopar includes. If it's there, you might as well use it. And once you get all of these tightened up, what I'm gonna do first is start underneath and get those fully tightened and then suck it into the frame rails up top. They'll all get torqued down to 165 Newton meters, so there'll be two on either side of the outside and then two up from underneath on both sides. So right now what I'm gonna do is just, like I mentioned before, 
start them down underneath here. You can do it by hand for a little bit. We'll grab our ratchet. Get that one snugged up in the back. We'll get this one snugged up up front here. After we get all the four of those tightened up, I'm gonna now tighten down these side ones. And once we have all those snugged up, we can now go back with 165 Newton meter and torque all eight of those bolts we just put in. Now that the hitch is all torqued, we can put on the rear bumper. And we're gonna start with these two outside bolts to get them tightened down. You can kind of reach in there with your hands. Then we'll go ahead and grab our ratchet to get those tightened up. So these are gonna get torqued down to 30 Newton meters, as well as the nuts that go in the back of the studs on the rear bumper. There are two on each side and you're gonna use a 16 millimeter nut that we pulled off originally and get the two tightened down over here and the two over there and then we can connect some wiring. So this is what the factory nut's gonna look like. Just go ahead and get it started on both of them. And then we're gonna grab a ratchet with a 16 mil socket to get them tightened down. These will also get torqued down to 30 Newton meters. So here's our license plate light harness that we've already reinstalled. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab our trailer light harness, push it back into the push pin holes that are on the new Mopar hitch. There's one there, one there, one over here. And we can click this. Click that back into place. Make sure all the push pins are all the way in. So guys, that'll complete our installation of this Mopar rear hitch on our 2020 Gladiator. As you saw, it was a pretty simple installation with only having to remove a couple bolts and screws which hold on the rear bumper and the hitch. Honest to gosh, I was really surprised at how easy it was to pull off this rear bumper, as well as to get that factory hitch support brace removed from the vehicle. Now, one thing I do like with Mopar is that they include literally everything you need, including new hardware, but plus one of these cool Jeep hitch plug covers. So this is simply gonna slide over the hitch like this, to retain it, make sure it gets seated all the way around. And all I gotta do is hit it into place. So Mopar is really great with including literally everything you need right down to the hitch plug cover, which really finishes off the back look of this Jeep. Now, like I said before, this hitch is rated up to 7,650 pounds, but depending on your vehicle's configuration, you might not be able to tow that much. Make sure you consult your factory vehicle's owner manual to make sure you can tow up to the rated amount of your vehicle's capacity. Now, if you wanna check out this hitch as well as many other great Gladiator parts, be sure to visit cjponyparts.com. And until next time, we're gonna hook something up to this hitch, see how it tows, and I'll see you guys out on the trails. Hope you enjoyed that video. To stay up to date on our CJ Off-Road videos, make sure to subscribe up top here. And for any other installs, make sure to click the link right above.